Let's go to Mike Rodak, ESPN Buffalo Bills reporter with Armin and Levac on 104.5, the team you're home for New York sports. We're live from Sapone Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. And uh, Mike, last time we talked to you, you almost died in the snowstorm. Are you yeah. okay? Have you dug out yet? I, I can confirm. Sources do confirm that I'm still alive. So thankfully, <laughs> that's you know, good. I'm still here and still, still breathing. What about your tree in your front yard? Because I believe it broke while we were on the phone together. Yeah, it, you know, it's still kind of thin there. I don't think they're going to move it. So <laughs> I'm not going to move it. Well, that's good. If there's another storm, you're going to need that firewood. So just leave it. Yeah, exactly, uh, right? Glad the pre- the cleanup process in Buffalo is going so well. All right, uh, Mike, of course, the big news, the Buffalo Bills taking down the Green Bay Packers in Buffalo over the weekend. How much of a surprise was this victory to you, specifically how the defense handled Aaron Rodgers? I would say it was nothing short of shocking, honestly. I mean, you look back at uh, what the Packers have done in some games this season. Now, granted, they were scoring a lot more points at home than they were on the road. I think they had the biggest discrepancy uh, between home and road scoring of any team in the league. But still, I mean, would you really expect Kyle Lorton to basically have a better game, even though Orton wasn't great, a better game than Aaron Rodgers? Of course not. So I think that part of it was, again, shocking to me. Um, you know, I expected the Bills' defense to put up some sort of a fight, but, again, you go back to those early season games, that uh, Philip Rivers performance, that Tom Brady performance, and you're thinking – you know, is this Bills defense really that good? And now you look at the past two weeks between Peyton and Aaron Rodgers, and both of them being held, in Rodgers' case, to his lowest passer rating ever, and Manning's case to his, lower, his lowest passer rating since 2008. And you're like, wow, you know, this, this defense is for real. This defense may be the best in the league. Um, so, you know, again, it's, it, it's changed my opinion of this defense and certainly I didn't think as highly of them as I did last week. Now, now with this Packers win, with the defense, you know, not I wouldn't say blanking, but damn near blanking, uh, Aaron Rodgers and Peyton Manning, is this enough on a resume where Doug Marone is going to be back next year as the Bills head coach? I'd say right now the chances are, are pretty strong. I'd, I'd put them over 80%, over 90%, uh, you know, really based on this win and based off, you know, now this team has won eight games for the first time since 2004. Um, that's a sign of progress. It's a two-game um, improvement over last season, and I think at this point it's hard to justify uh, firing him. Now, you could say, you know, the Bills probably won't, won't make the playoffs. Even if they win these final two games, they're going to need a lot of help to get in. Um, and then you can sit there and, you know, on December 29th and, and look at it and say, hey, this team's out of the playoffs for the 15th straight year. You know, how much progress really has there been? But I think, you know, the people around this organization are, are smart enough to know that this is, you know, a tough year in the AFC. I think if the Bills were in the NFC this year, they probably would have, you know, be potentially a division winner, you know, the way they've played. So um, you know, I, there's definitely enough to, to justify him staying. I don't think there's enough to justify cleaning house and blowing this up. You know, why would you want to blow up what right now, what for right now looks like um, a pretty good thing to have going, at least on defense. So, um, I'd say the chances right now are, are pretty strong. Not not you know rock solid, ironclad strong, but uh, pretty strong right now. Right. If they get blown out by the Raiders, let's reassess the situation. Exactly. Right. You know that's not that. You know that's a Bills thing to do. Let's put it that way. You know, it'd be a very <laughs> Bills move to to go out and beat the Packers and then go out to Oakland and lose. So uh, you know, at the same time, Bills fans have seen this before. Two thousand four, of course, uh, they had that game against the Steelers at the end of the season, and then they lost that. So. Um, you know, it, it never seems to always work out perfectly for the Bills, at least in the past, you know, 10, 15 years. So we'll see what happens on Sunday. ESPN Buffalo Bills reporter Mike Rodak. He's on Twitter, at Mike Rodak. And Mike, in regards to Doug Marone, we're looking at a guy who, from our opinion, this team could have easily gone the other direction. We get the high expectations going into the year, but with the ownership up in the air for a lot of this season, are you going to leave Buffalo? And then with the snowstorm and all the other drama around uh, this team and situations, they could have fallen apart, right? I mean, a lot of head coaches might not have been able to handle this uh, this type of, of scrutiny, if that's what you want to call it, during a season. Should we give Doug Marone credit for all those things? I think so. I think that's, that goes back even to what they did in the preseason. You know, this team was uh, under Doug Marone's guidance, so to speak. You know, They went to Pittsburgh for the joint practices, and they had the game in Canton. And uh, you know, Marone had them in training camp for five weeks in, in the dorms out in Rochester. So, um, you know, he... He took the steps to make this team come together early on in the process here. 
And I think we're in some ways seeing the fruits of that, that labor right now in a team that uh, is very close. You don't really hear too many issues. I know Mike Williams is obviously a guy who was uh, aggrieved, so to speak, uh, during the year. But um, otherwise, you know, it's been a pretty clean year as far as the locker room and, and personalities and, and people getting along that way. So um, I think you need to give him credit for that. Uh, and again, you know, we talked to Anthony Dixon after the game on Sunday, and he said, you know, people don't really, people don't realize how good of a motivator Doug Marone is. And um, being a former player, I think he knows what buttons to push with these guys. And um, as you said, they really haven't gotten on those three, four game losing streaks this year. Whenever they've had something kind of go wrong, as we saw, you know, after the Chiefs game, and then you know the Dolphins game had the two straight losses, and they bounced right back. Even after the Broncos lost, they come back home, you know, face Aaron Rodgers, and they have the game they did Sunday. So uh, he's never really allowed them to get too low and, and to really get into that uh, that downward spiral, or this downward spiral, which again we've seen out of some Bills teams over the last ten or fifteen years. You brought up the the Mike Williams issue, and and that's always a fun one for me because you know we know he's kind of a head case. They waive him. He clears waivers. He's on the IR. Are are the Bills on the hook for five point two million dollars for him next year? They're not. There's some confusion over that, and uh, you know the the latest word I've gotten on that, and really the most accurate word right now is that uh, that guaranteed base salary next year, which like you said, is five point two million dollars. That doesn't kick in or doesn't become fully guaranteed until the third day of the league year next year, which is uh, will be sometime in March. So essentially the Bills will have a period between the day after the Super Bowl and the, uh, the, the second day of the league year in March in which they can cut him uh, and, and basically be completely washed of any money. So, um, yeah, it, it's not they're not on the hook for that unless they happen to keep him on the roster past that date, which... Uh, given you know everything that's gone on between him and the team, I would highly doubt that happens. Mike Rodak, ESPN Buffalo Bills reporter on Twitter at Mike Rodak with Armin in the back. We're live from Zappone Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. Mike, as we look at this team, we, we, a lot of us have said quarterback away. Do you have any inclination what they'll do? Is this is this a team that you know maybe looks back at EJ Manuel? He gets back out there. Do they roll with Kyle Orton again? Is are they in the free agent, the draft market? Like as you look at these guys, what do you think happens? as your quarterback uh, for next year? I don't. I don't think uh, there's a definitive um, approach that they, they put together quite yet, but uh, I, I think sticking with either Kyle Lorton or E.J. Manuel is going to be very hard to sell to this fan base after this year. You know, we've all seen how well this defense has played the entire year, and, and in many ways the offense has let them down in a lot of games. So... Um, you know, trotting out EJ Manuel as a starter again next year, or Kyle Orton as a starter again next year, it's pretty hard to sell tickets. You know, and again, that's the bottom line. It, it's filling the seats on Sunday. So, um, you know, what do they do? Again, go on the first round pick. They have to get creative. Uh, in some ways, you have to wait until you know what really happens. What happens in, in January, in February, in March on the free agent market? Um, you know, will the guy be? come available you didn't expect to come available so you have to keep your options open in that sense i mean the names that are obviously being folded out there i mean mark sanchez jay cutler rg3 i mean would any of those would, would the bills be genuinely interested in any of those guys i mean after watching cutler last night probably not um rg3 of course comes with his own host of um you know locker room problems and potential distractions there so those downsides to a lot of these guys who are going to hit the market and that's basically why they're on the market. So the Bills need to figure out which guy, If again, if they go outside the organization, which I think they should, which guy fits them the best and um, really has the least risk for making this all blow up again. And as of today, you would be more surprised if they stuck with the two guys or one of the two guys they have now. I would be, correct, yes. Wow. ESPN, Mike Rodak with us of uh, Buffalo Bills, covers the Bills every day. And, Mike, you mentioned it, the playoff scenario for the Bills while they are still in it with two weeks to go. That by itself is uh, is pretty nice, but, man, it is a tough road for the Bills at this point, isn't it? It is. Uh, it's, it's tough to even figure out some of these scenarios and which ones would get them eliminated just because there are so many teams that are still in it. You know, the AFC North, of course, still has three teams. Uh, fighting for that last spot, and then there's three three teams still alive in the AFC West, and it's really six teams total that the Bills need to worry about here. 
Um, and so it's tough to even figure out, you know, if this happens on, on Saturday, even, you know, the Chargers playing on Saturday and then Sunday afternoon, even before the Bills play, I believe the, the Ravens play, the Chiefs play. So uh, there's all these pieces that can fall either direction. And, uh, you know, to be honest, it's going to be tough even if the Bills win uh, this Oakland game and even if they go into New England and win for the first time there in, in over a decade um, from, for them to make the playoffs simply because, uh, the, the tiebreakers. I think we've talked about this before, but you know their conference record isn't very good, and they've lost some some head-to-head games against the um, the Chiefs and the Chargers. So, uh, in that sense, it'll be tough for them to, if even if they have ten wins, to win those tiebreakers against another team. Uh, with 10 wins at the end of the day. He's Mike Rodak of ESPN covers the Bills. And as always, Mike, you can find him on Twitter at Mike Rodak. Appreciate your time, my man. Uh, thanks so much for this today. And got to be honest, man, we're having some fun talking Buffalo Bills in December. We could get used to this. Yeah, it's a little different, huh? <laughs> it is. It is. We like it. Well, do uh, stay right. safe and uh, enjoy the weekend. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, guys.